Warning, this podcast contains spoilers. Oh, God. What's up, everyone, and welcome to the As Seen on TV podcast for Gotham. Season 1, Episode 2, Selena Kyle. I'm your host, Dom. And with me, I have my co-host. What? The Joker. Oh, me, what the fuck is that? The, the, oh, it's Nikki. <laughs> that, is, that is a creepy Joker. It's the Joker. It's the Joker. Dom started the podcast, I look over at Nikki's screen, and I'm like, holy fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that, that scared the crap out of us. <laughs> It's not Halloween yet. You tried to Girl, push into the ground. Pusheen? No. Wow. Oh. It's okay, I'm back. I'm back. Wow. I'm okay. Um, also, down below, we have Cleo. Hello. And the lovely and beautiful John. Hi, I brought my batarang. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sweet. That is that is the best batarang ever. Where, where can I because get it? Because it's in the U.S. of China. I can get it in the U.S. of China? Yeah, damn right. Is it sharp? <laughs> oh, yeah. If you were to open both ends and throw it at me, would it kill me? Uh, if, if a blade hit you, yes. If but likely you just get knocked on the head. Oh. Because it's not very well weighted. So. Oh, okay. Well, you can't really expect that out of a battering double knife. But, yeah. That wasn't really. made by Bruce Wayne. This is very, very true. Very true. So, we're now two episodes deep into Gotham. What are your guys' opinions of Gotham thus far, more so than just the pilot? I'm liking it. I'm still on the, you know, I'm still on that liking train, because it really is a new, a whole new world to me. This isn't Aladdin. A whole new world. <laughs> Don't you dare close your eyes. <laughs> um. So I don't get that I, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm still meh. It was a good episode, but... I, I think they're they're fleshing it out a lot better. Like, they, they were able to focus m more on characters, specific characters this time, than throwing everybody in, I mean. Yeah. Um, Edward Nigma still made a very kind of awkward appearance. I still had to roll my <laughs> eyes when he came in, though. Just yeah. Good. He's, good. They're, they're forcing him into this, I think. They really are. We don't need him yet. <laughs> No. Don't. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's just an awkward little fella. Mostly harmless, right? Awkward little biscuit. Mostly <laughs> harmless, yeah. Um, but, like, on the same token, this episode is called Selena Kyle, and I expected a lot more focus to actually be on her. Yeah. Maybe some Good origin. Thing. Awesome. But at the same time, I wasn't extremely disappointed with it either, because we, we did get a decent amount on her. Um, yeah, I I don't know. I think I wanted to see more of her silence. Right. She did a lot of talking this episode. She did. She did I more don't think so than we expected out of her. Yeah. It was about damn time. They could have let her be play the silent role a little nah. longer. Uh, it it would have gotten old. I think. But she's a cat. <laughs> yeah, and your cat doesn't I, I, I shut up, so... <laughs> I mean, not only so, to the point was she... They talked too much. She talking a lot this episode, but she also threatened a police officer that she was going to accuse him of touching her. I mean, yeah. But that's not any character for her at all. No, I know, but... I mean, that's... That's exactly what Catwoman would do. It's it not. Like, it just oh, felt. It felt awkward to me watching as a viewer that this little girl, like, how old is no. she portrayed in this? Well, she knows how to work the system. So exactly. Just means she, she's savvy, mm -hmm. and it was supposed to make him uncomfortable because it made him uncomfortable. Yeah. Yes. They did a good job at that. They certain. I. I thought it was great. Yeah. Um, we we got we got to see Bruce pushing, testing his own limits again. Like, we, we saw this a little bit in the first episode where he was up in the building, and at first it looks like, um, he's, he's 
ready to commit suicide, right? That's what it initially looked like. Yeah. But then when he, he grounded himself back and he realized where he was, you, you could tell that was not his intentions. So now this episode, he, he's playing with the candle and he burns himself pretty bad, but he's, he's testing to see, like, how far he can go. Yep. And, and then Alfred flipped out. But rightfully so, right? Do you, how do you? What do you guys think of? Uh, uh, that's my opinion anyway. What, what do you guys think of Alfred the way he's he's raising Bruce? Um, the best that he can for not knowing he was ever ever going to have a child. <laughs> that's true, but he's not being assertive enough. I mean, he, Bruce needs a little bit of discipline, but I think if he gave Bruce the proper discipline, he wouldn't be Batman. It's also hard to say that because he is he was hired is hired by the Waynes who gave him instructions on how to raise Bruce and they're like let him be her, 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 her. yeah let this <laughs> little child choose I, whether or not he gets therapy it's his like, her, no. her, her. well I, maybe I mean, they I weren't ex- they probably weren't expecting that they would be out of his life at such a young age maybe they're thinking if mm-hmm. if we get picked off he might be you know 14 15 years old he kind of has a semblance of where he needs to go in life, but the kid's like nine. Even a fourteen or fifteen year old may need therapy. Well, yes, they don't. Okay, have it. literally Bruce everyone and... on the planet needs therapy if their parents. No, no, no shot that's true. Right. <laughs> yes, 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 but it's crazy. Yeah, no this shit. is true. This is true. But Cleo, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I don't know. We we didn't spend a whole lot of time with uh, Thomas and Martha, but I'm pretty sure they didn't sound like that. Well. The loose interpretation, you know. I'm not very good at uh, voices. Oh, okay. Voices. <laughs> I, no, I'm just kidding. I thought it was spot on. I know. Here we go. No, that's what Alfred sounds like. Well, you know. <laughs> I mean, at least it's better than what Charlie Brown's parents sounded like. <laughs> Although Alfred kind of sounds like that sometimes, he does, which is a nice throwback. There you go. It's all but coming in all full circle. In all seriousness, I, I think um, it's really weird because Alfred's trying to be firm, but like in a completely reactive manner. You know, he's not yeah. really doing anything to promote any kind of growth in in Bruce or. He's really just trying to put fires out where he sees them. And he's kind of, I feel like he kind of needs to start being a little more, like like we said, assertive and getting ahead of Bruce. And, you know, saying, like, look, you can explore your boundaries, but you can do it in a way that's, A, not going to give me a heart attack. But, you know, also, he could, he could explore his fears in a much less Life self injurious way. Situation. Yeah. Because, I mean, he, he not only burnt his hand, but apparently he was also, I think he, they mentioned he was also cutting himself, too. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, he calls it exploring his boundaries. Everyone else on the planet goes, no, you're grieving your parents. So, yeah. it, it, you know, you, 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 can, you can skin the cat however you want, but guess what? Same shit. Why are you taking so, this out on Catwoman now? Look, listen, I love her a lot. <laughs> But you want to skin her? Uh, well, no. I mean, I think he can draw these lines very, very close to obviously what he's going to become, Batman, yeah. which is like he he didn't do whoa, anything. Whoa, to whoa, stop whoa! His I know we I know we said that this podcast was going to contain spoilers, but really, you had to give us the end of the show. Oh no, Bruce Wayne becomes Batman. I'm sorry, I spoiled it for everybody. Oh, wait, who's Batman? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we killed but, we killed Omi. I mean, that's his driving <laughs> his driving factor is he couldn't do anything to save his parents and he wasn't going to let that happen to anyone else's parents. Right. So the fact that he could he didn't do anything and fear was what stopped him from doing something, he thinks fear is something he has to beat the crap out of. Right. And also while we're on the, the topic of fear, we, we get to see Falcone kind of threatening um, Fish Mooney uh, in, in a very kind of polite um, manner. Um, Fish oh. Monet. Oh. Monet. No, and it's, it's Falcone. The show gets it wrong. It's the name is actually Falcone, but yeah, I know it's Falcone, and it, I I'm never gonna say Falcone. No, it's Falcone. I, I will always right. knee jerk say Falcone. 
But anyway. anyway. <laughs> wasn't, wasn't it Falcone in the Dark Knight movie as well? No. It's always Falcone. I don't remember. Until today. The <laughs> second until one till. of that trilogy That's is the only one that matters. Right. Um, she kind of uh, didn't take it very well. Oh my God. Yeah, he kind of beat the oh. shit out of her lover. What's his oh, name, Laszlo? No, that was her exercise boy. Get it right. I mean, <laughs> well, no. <laughs> she said that I mean, because yes. she knew what Falcone was going to do to him. Yeah, well, he did it anyway. Yeah, yes. said Falcone. They, they um, exercise very specific parts of themselves. Yeah. But I, she obviously had some form of attachment to him because she was yes. fighting real hard not to lose it. Yeah, she, she kept not looking cry. over his shoulder and like, oh, God, what's going on? Stop doing that. Can I just say, Jada is the best actress in the show right now? Yes. Yeah. I love best. her. As soon as yeah, I heard she awesome. was going to be in the show, I I just like, yes, must watch now. Even more than I was going to. She is incredible. She mm-hmm. is. Yeah, so she's definitely kind of hiding the fact that she's got feelings for Laszlo because she knows what, what happens when you're in that kind of position. Yeah. So. I mean, they are probably just fling feelings, but... Right. Still, she doesn't want to see him get the crap kicked out of him. Right, the which crush and bust. He probably he's probably dead too, actually. <laughs> yeah. No, they carried him off, and he was still kind of like. Yeah, but we, we, we've seen what bus. they do to punks in the back alleys in Gotham. This is true. This is true. But um, like just to make things clear too, that was not the comedian that was in the first episode. I no, know, I know some no. people were thinking it possibly could have been. It's not. Those are two separate characters. The yeah. comedian is probably the Joker. Let's just throw that out there. And this guy is clearly not the Joker. Yeah. No. So. Wait, wait, which guy? The comedian uh, that was up on stage telling yeah. jokes in the pilot versus yeah. Laszlo. They're not the same. Oh, people. oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Same person. Just, just wanted to throw that out there. But yeah. um, so the, this guy was a waiter, a bartender, or whatever. Yeah. Right. So it was brought up in in this episode that the the Wayne family and the Falcone family um are basically the balance in Gotham. They balance each other out. Well, what exactly do you think entails this balance? Um, see, I didn't think that the Waynes were much involved in the crime, uh, the law and like part of the whole scene but I mean they that's me and I don't really know that much I don't <laughs> think they were but more I think what he was saying was they're both taking care of Gotham financially mm-hmm. the Waynes are on the side the, the, the legit side and Falcone is on the right. the, the the seedy side yeah. but they, they are both needed both to keep the city yeah. Um, we, we, we got a newcomer, Wendell, in chat with us today, and he brings up that uh, he's a big fan of, of all the Falcone scenes, and uh, also the same could be said about the Penguin. And, and mm-hmm. speaking of the Penguin, it's just like, I cherish every single scene that he is in. He is what <laughs> makes this show right now for me. And I, I, we talked about this last week how they shoehorned his nickname, the Penguin, in. Mm-hmm. And now that we've gotten past that, where he actually has the limp, there's some reason yeah. for them to use the, the, the Penguin name. I think it, we've gotten past that awkwardness, and we're, right. we're, in, we're into it. Right. Yeah. He's, I, I feel he's like slowly if it was, just, like... I still feel like break. if it was established a little bit better in the, the first one, like, have him break his leg or, or something earlier on in the episode, and have them joke... And tease him, calling him a penguin, and then have him get upset over that and snap. I think would have been more impactful than just it's a casual nickname that they threw around for him for, him for yeah. no reason. I mean, um, but it definitely felt better in this episode when it yes, was used because we got past that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Well, um, I mean, I've heard the nickname like penguin suit for a tuxedo. Right. So I mean, he. I mean, when we first met him, he was wearing a tuxedo. And maybe that is something you know, he wore this. all the time. <laughs> so, that could have brought his nickname on somehow. Yeah. And the nose. The I nose, mean, there's yes. a lot, there's a lot he, better yeah, nose jokes out there. He is, but. he is pretty white <laughs> and has black hair. So, I mean, it kind of makes sense for, like, yeah, you know, that, too. Maybe. I mean, those, those but, teeth. Yeah, that mm. didn't help. Those teeth but, put smoker's teeth to shame. 
<laughs> yeah. Ugh. Well, I mean, I bet that's what the penguin looks like. Right. Just, you know, he's supposed to be Danny DeVito shaped, not what, tall. And skinny, what did but <laughs> we'll get there. He's supposed to be Danny DeVito shaped. But what about in the original TV series? He wasn't like that. But he yeah, was still sure. large, wasn't he? Like, sort of that stocky shape. He was stocky, but he wasn't overweight. Yeah, well, whatever. I mean, image aside, he's he's so freaking funny. I he love is. him. He's great. He's, he's great. So oh, yeah. great. But what did you think? What did you, did you think of uh, Oswald's mother that we were introduced to this episode? Oh, oh she's that poor just woman. the dearest. She is divine. <laughs> she has no idea about anything that's going on. <laughs> the poor she's, thing. She's very strange herself, though. Oh, His oh. clothes are all here. He's got to come <laughs> home. <laughs> He's a darling boy, really. I insist. How did she make um, the agents repronounce her name? Her last name? Kupilput. 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 I love that. Yeah. It, it, did, was there like a Russian twang in her voice? There must be. It had to, there had to be. It was, sometimes it, be. it was hard to... It was hard to realize what she was saying until like 10 seconds later. You're like, oh. oh. And I just love how they stylized her apartment. It was just perfect with mm -hmm. all that. Yeah. Oh, that like 19, no, 1800s like linen everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. But what did you guys think about the major crimes unit? Like what, what was their involvement in going to the house and all that? Like. I didn't quite understand that. Were they trying to find the penguin for yes. for more yes. inside information? Oh, yeah. or, well, I think or they wanted yeah. to make sure he was bumped off, you know? Mm -hmm. They weren't sure where he was. I guess they didn't. he didn't report in. Yeah, and I think they they knew that there was some of, like, the actual, like, uh, the PD. It was their involvement to get the penguin, Cobblepot, Oswald, whatever, out of the scene. So, um, yeah, they're probably looking into that to... Uh, nail some asses to the wall yeah and then we we see the penguin actually kept one of the kids alive and uh kept him in the trailer and he, he kind of used him as ransom and the mother didn't believe it and all this but he was trying to get ten thousand dollars out of her uh what was going through his mind this kid's Here's... really shitty <laughs> he seemed like a typical college student he didn't seem like you know yeah. anybody super important He's got this nice shiny car that daddy probably bought him. If he went to it, like, I assume he looked through his pockets to get a student ID to a prestigious college. You probably think there was money somewhere, but I mean, yeah. I don't think his, his, you know, initial intention was to take this guy and tie him up and beat him and, and all those things until, no. until he was, you know, called, called his... Oh, hey, I murdered your friend. Well, I mean... <laughs> He's he's working his way back into Gotham, so he's got to start slow. So he gets ten grand here, and then he kind of uses that money and maybe hires some goons and turns that into some more money. And he's got you know he's got a long way to go. That's true because he can't you know, exactly go back home. No, it's no, been he established. Can't show up and be like, hey guys. Yeah, it's been established by that little visit from Major Crimes that he can't just go home. No. So, I think he knows that too, especially with with the fact with um, Gordon was like, "Don't ever come back to Gotham." Yeah. yeah. yeah he's, he's like, well, well, Gordon is Gordon's saying that. On the line. Yeah. But exactly. Penguin heard that whole conversation, so it's not like that's all he heard. He heard the whole thing leading up to it, so he knows not only uh, is he wanted as a dead man for being a traitor, but he knows the repercussions of that from not only Falcone and, and Mooney, but from. Uh, uh, the police, the Gotham police now, too, because they're in on it. It's basically, they're working hand in hand, which, mm -hmm. which brings me to the point of uh, James and Harvey. Uh, the dynamic that they've they've been having here, um, they, they almost seem like a, a married couple. They're hilarious. <laughs> it's too much. They're definitely um, at the opposite ends of the spectrum, and it makes... It makes good conversation between the two because it's always going to be fighting, arguing. Yeah. Well, one person's right, one person's wrong, vice versa. Well, hold no. on, hold on. Nobody's going to beat the crap out of you. I just said I was going to beat the crap out of him. You can't just say. <laughs> yeah. I, I want I should break his legs or something. 
Well, look, this is the thing, though. But they stopped fighting when they were looking for the kids. You did notice that. Yeah. I mean, that's really important, that they actually just shut the fuck up. Right. He was like, he's going to let me beat the crap out of you yeah. until we find his kids. He goes, yeah, no, I will. Yeah, and that's I something mean, that like really we saw cool. with Gordon. We saw how he's prim proper. He goes by the rules and all that. And then we saw like the end of last episode how he kind of had to bend those rules a little bit to to still keep his morality intact. Mm-hmm. And then, like John just said, with with I'm just gonna stand here and let him beat you. Like it's true. Like that's you're a Gordon scumbag like, yeah. children. So mm-hmm. I'm gonna let him beat the crap out of you because I don't give a shit. Because <laughs> Gordon knows he's gotta really... he's gotta work the system and. There's no, can't stay squeaky clean. Not, especially not in Gotham. It, it was nice to see that they're not just going to be fighting all the time, you know, because yes. that would get very, very tired very and, quickly. And I, I mean, even honestly, in this episode, I was like, all right, guys, come on, just like, can we stop with the fucking the debates? <laughs> like, <laughs> I was disappointed I didn't see Harvey's bottle of Pepto this episode. It's true, <laughs> but it, like Ross something. Something that we discussed last week was uh, whether or not Harvey was actually, like, going to be more of the, the villain role, and he is playing bad cop, essentially, and yeah, yeah mm-hmm. he's a little dirty, but he does still have morals intact, like, yes. he's got a job to do, but he still has his morals, so he's playing the bad cop a little bit dirtier than, than Gordon, Gordon is obviously playing the good cop, but he's also not afraid to get his hands dirty, so... I mean, I think Harvey is pretty neutral. He will do the bad because, yeah, the system's corrupt. So he's going to do it because he's got to not get himself in trouble. Yeah. He's very selfish. He's very neutral. Would you even say chaotic neutral? Chaotic neutral. Who the fuck is Darth Vader? (laughs) Darth Vader just came in and he took over the podcast for a few seconds. He's coming to get you. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely more adapted, I suppose, to the world that that Gotham has become. So there is that. I mean, he is, uh, in, in in a weird way, a reality check. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like no, he's like, dude, you could be the nicest cop in the world, but the mob runs this city. Like, there's literally nothing you can. Like, there's nothing one man can do. I mean, little does he know that there actually is a lot that one man can do, and he just hasn't seen in the future like we have. But still, yeah. But he I also. Mean, is very short-sighted and is very I need to do this to keep myself alive mm-hmm. so Absolutely. I'm going to do it yeah he's a, he's the pragmatic of the two mm-hmm. but at the same time Gordon's no slouch I mean he's learning really quickly how to handle himself like he's you know I think like even that conversation they had with Fish where he kind of got in her face a little bit and he's like she said like, like I said no one knows and he was like okay and, and I think maybe last episode he would have been like, well, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? Yeah. He's learned. He's learned not to poke the badger. Yeah, he's yeah. learned very quickly that he um, he has to be um, quiet about his good side. There, <laughs> I guess that's the best way I could put it. Which Barbara's fucking up? Oh God, Barbara! Listen, she did something this episode though, so that was she good. Did. She had a goddamn personality. So, okay. We, we, um, Wendell's asking another question in chat. It goes, uh, how do you guys feel about how the kids are treated in Gotham overall? Shite. They're treated like crap, but I mean, it seems like everybody in Gotham that is not on the crime side or, you know, has a high-end thing is treated yeah. like crap. Yeah, exactly. If you don't have a family or wealth, you're, you're, you're treated like crap. Yeah. Right. And, and then and that goes it, to show what Barbara did. She stuck up for the kids yeah. because it was the right thing to do when nobody else would. But it's mm-hmm. like Gordon's got a plan, honey. He's 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 gonna work it out. I just wish I wish of it. Well, he would like, tell, it he, even if he told her, I don't know. You also have to remember last episode, the girl from the the MCU. I don't remember what her name is. Came in and said that you don't know Gordon like you like you think you do. He's corrupt just like the rest of the system. So now she had to take things into her own hand because she doesn't know exactly what to believe there. She wants to believe Gordon's a good man, but just in case, she had to take actions into her own hands to make sure yeah. the safety and I of think these that, kids. I think that that's going to be terrible, terrible tension later on because she doesn't know he is actually good 
and that he's just working the system. So yes. if she sees him doing something corrupt, that's just to, to you know, keep his image up. And he can't really tell her what she's doing either because that would be bad just in case she slipped up. Yeah. Yeah. And then meanwhile, this whole episode, we, had, we were introduced to these two villains that um, kind of came out of left field. Patty and Doug, they, they <laughs> were scooping around, uh, taking like, homeless children. Like Doug yeah. and Patty Mayonnaise? Pretty much, right? Okay. <laughs> that was their names, Doug and Patty. I can't, I can't. If it's their <laughs> real names, I don't know. Or if it's aliases they took. Um, but you but, ruined yeah. it. You ruined it, Omi. What? There was a plot twist. They, they got, <laughs> was he wearing a, a goddamn sweater vest? Wait, was he wearing a sweater vest? He was. Oh God, he was. What? Was it, oh, was it, no. was it dark green? <laughs> I don't no. remember. It wasn't, my God. No. Oh, jeez. Was he wearing a red bow tie, though? I think he was. He was not, wearing a bow he's tie. He's not Smash Adams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, like, so they came out of left field. They're not, like, these established characters from, um, like, the comics or something like that, where people would recognize them instantly. They're not the Joker. Mm -hmm. They're not Mr. Freeze. They're not the Scarecrow. They're not, you know, any big villain like that. They were just kind of created i guess for the show which is really cool so now i love the fact that we're going to start seeing their own villains in addition to to building up some of these more familiar ones i'm glad yeah, that they're i mean not... that's what fish the you know fish is the first right one we saw like that right. but no I'm, I'm i'm glad after the first episode getting bombarded with all these people we know i go okay i got it i know who you are yeah, I mean, Someone, you know, people, right. they're freaky. Like, they're, I mean, I love them. They were cool. They but were. God, that, they were creepy as that hell. That needle was, oh my God, that needle. Uh, was it, yeah, okay, I, I heard, I heard pin, pin or pen? It was, it was a, a pin. pin. A pin, uh, It was okay. a long, one of those long pins that you would, uh, no, stick no, in your No, guys, belt. it was a chapstick. Women, women would wear. <laughs> the chapstick. Yeah, no, those are actual, like, old-timey pins that women Yeah, use. like a needle point. Well, not a needle point, like a sewing pin, right? Yeah, just like, just like this. A pen. Yeah. No. No. It's, it's more like, it's more like this. Oh, so you mean... Oh, I don't know where my pin is. I have one. You mean one. like this? Yeah. Okay. It's like that. Yeah, that. <laughs> it's actually, one. it's actually what Omi has. <laughs> a straw. <laughs> Yeah, there you chopstick. go. Oh, it's a chopstick. Close <laughs> enough. We're, guys, guys are good at stuff. Wasn't it? Wasn't it Mike last year that just kept pulling out odd pairs of chopsticks? <laughs> yes, indeed, indeed. <laughs> but um, also, while these these brand new characters uh, were introduced, we did get a pretty familiar name that was tossed around, which was the doll maker. Doll So. Nikki, why don't you tell us all about the doll maker? I don't know who the fuck the doll maker is. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's a job for John. Cleo, Cleo, tell us what you know about the doll maker first. <laughs> well, listen, I don't remember the doll maker. I remember the puppet master. Okay. So every time I tried to think of the doll maker, all that came in my head was the puppet master. I'm like, that's not right. That's not right. <laughs> that's, not him. that's not right. So, from what I understand now, because I don't watch, I ha I haven't gotten a chance to really get into Arrow yet. I'm like three episodes in. I'm so far behind. I'm not gonna catch up before it airs this week. But, um, the, from what I understand, is the doll maker was mentioned in Arrow that it was the the doll maker was captured, uh before the show aired or whatever, and they were talking about how it was captured, something like that. It was, it's been referenced, too, quite a few times. Mm -hmm. um, so, look, uh, the doll maker is not in error, has not appeared physically, right? No. Okay. So um, it was only but then again, I don't remember captured. the mention of the doll maker in Arrow. I'm sure it was in slight passing. Yeah. And Probably something that the detective or, or Laurel said. Right. Which would bring it into this timeline now when, when they're telling Gotham this story here. So my question is, before John even tells you who the doll maker is, um, is do you think that they're going to 
very loosely connect these shows, or is Gotham its own separate entity? I mean, listen, it sounds like it, which totally blows up my theory from last week, which is they're not going to cross villains, because we're talking about Ra's al Ghul, who is in... We haven't seen him, but he's in Arrow. He plays a very big role in Arrow, although we haven't seen him. Right. So right. I was like, well, they won't bring Raj al Ghul into Gotham because he's an Arrow. Right. But well, now that they're bringing the Dollmakers, this thin thread, maybe they'll cross something, something, something. Well, they could young Raj al Ghul or something. I don't know. I know. Yeah, I, yeah I, but... I I mean, if you're taking it, like, timeline-wise, Gotham, Gotham's happening... Like twenty years before anything in Fla- right. and like Flash or Arrow are happening, so I, 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 it can't be the same. No, I mean, no, it, no, no. I know, but but having the same. What villain I'm saying is why stories. Ironclad. What I said last week about they're definitely not going to bridge these two shows <laughs> is mm. now cracked. Right. So I so characters <laughs> that that are able to be brought in that are shared community characters are not out of the question. So that does not rule out any Justice League exclusive villains. Like we may see some of the the origins of these characters come over at some point. Solomon too. Grundy. There you go. All right. So so John, would you like to tell us a little bit about the Dollmaker? All right. So now he has a very interesting origin story, but I don't think they they can't do it because they've already kind of kiboshed that. But basically, what happened was he was he went on like these hunting trips with his dad. His name is like Barton. Yeah, I think the kid's name is Barton. So he went on these hunting trips with his dad where his dad would, like, kill and eat people. His dad was some crazy cannibal. But I think Jim Gordon shot his father and killed him. And this was when Jim was, like, a young cop. And then he spent some time in foster care, and then he came back after a few years as the doll maker, and he wore this creepy mask that was, like, Part of it, like part of his father's skin on his face, it was really cool. But, I think Cleo's brain did a thing again. Uh oh, is it called a thought? It's a thought. <laughs> it's just a, it's like a headache with pictures. Jim was in the army. He went overseas. The doll maker is overseas. Jim oh, still could have shot his father. Oh, hey, <laughs> nice. All right. So the deal was he would just base. He was just a serial killer. You know, like most of Gotham's villains were, and he would make dolls, these weird, these creepy doll things out of the skin and limbs of his victims. So um, there's this whole tie-in with the Joker then, but that, that, we won't get to that. But basically, that, that's who that's who the doll maker is. And, and eventually, I believe at some point in the story, he may or he may have kidnapped Mr. Jim. Um, but I don't want to get too into that because if they actually do that in the show, it'd be really freaking cool. And yeah, so that's kind of the doll maker in a nutshell. It definitely like looks skin. like they're setting the doll maker up to be um, a presence. I don't know how long it's going to take for them to actually introduce him. It seems like he's going to be like it's overseas, something that's overseas right now. That's really all we know. It's some kind of operation that's going on and that's there. That's very vague because yeah. my thought went to Europe. Mm-hmm. Somewhere in like Eastern Europe. Did but they, now that did they you say said, Japan, I thought they said Japan in this episode. I could be completely wrong. They just said overseas. Mooney said overseas. It was very vague. She mm-hmm. either didn't know anything or didn't want to say. Okay. But my mind went to Europe. But now that yeah. you say that, it apparently could mine be. went to Japan for some reason. Uh, <laughs> Gordon was stationed in Afghanistan. I think so. He could be in Afghanistan. Sure. He could be. I mean, yeah. They can do whatever they want. Somewhere we... Yeah, no, right? They can cool. do it wherever the fuck. But somewhere where Jim could have shot his dad. Yeah, I mean, that could be true. And that would be really, really cool. That would be if super they could pull, cool. If they could pull that off. I mean, I'm excited for that, for sure. As soon as it's a Dollmaker, I was just like, whoa, 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 whoa. oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. No, I recognize the Dollmaker name. I'm, I wasn't extremely familiar with the character, but I recognized it enough to know that it, it's it's a force to be reckoned with yeah and he only recently came into my awareness like i didn't know about him i mean since only very recently um so i was like very surprised because i like could just i was you know on you know you get stuck on the internet it's like batman wiki <laughs> so <laughs> i was reading about all these villains and blah 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 and it just happened i passed by the doll maker and i was like hmm neat 
I never heard of him. He's like Ed Gein, but in the Batman world. So, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm um, very excited to see where this goes. Erica mentions in chat that the cargo containers are more of an Asia China thing. So maybe that's why my mind jumped. Um, maybe, but I feel like those cargo building. containers go all over the world. Yeah, yeah that's true too. Um, and it, I guess it all depends on the the company. Trident. And this is a made-up company. This is the Trident thing. So they're going to visit Ariel's father. They're going to Atlantis. Yes, good job. Yeah, okay. that's it. Solve the mystery. Got it. Don't want to be mermaid kids. <laughs> I mean, wait, in coming Aquaman? Is this Gotham the right universe? Gotham crossover. Make it happen. Yeah. Safety. Gotham once, and now Aquaman is going to bring them there. <laughs> yep. yep. And they're going to swim through a portal into Middle Earth, and then Bilbo's going to be there. It's going to be great. <laughs> Until Spider-Man comes and tells them that the Marvel Cinematic Universe is taking over. Yep. So Major Hulk Crimes Hulk. Unit has been re uh, replaced by the Marvel Cinematic Universe. By S.H.I.E.L.D.? MCU. <laughs> the MCU is no yeah. longer the MCU. It is now the MCU. So. It's over. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm really excited for the doll maker. I can't wait to see how this plays out. I don't know how long it's going to take us to see the character. I, I don't expect to see it within the next couple episodes, but by the end of the season, maybe we're yeah. We, we do know this season is going to be 16 episodes. Um, maybe uh, mid season. It could be mid season. It could even be the season finale. Possibly. Because um, if if they can squeeze out one semi familiar major villain a season, they have a lot of room to work with here yeah mm -hmm. oh yeah and then the the big question is how far are they going to advance the, the timeline like do you guys think at the end of this season a year is going to go by at the, at the next season so like they can eventually catch up to batman like smallville went what 10 seasons i think it's gonna depend on how the the plot with gordon works out because if there's if he's got enough breathing room for us to jump ahead in time and not too much happen without us seeing, then yeah, I don't see why they wouldn't skip ahead, especially with child actors who mm -hmm. are going to be growing up a little bit for our eyes. We've seen that on, on recent shows such as Once Upon a Time. There there was a time when they had to come up with the, the story of the missing year in the middle of a season just to tell you that the story advanced a year's time and like that there's some stuff they had to do to work around that so with a, a smaller filming period like i think 16 is a sweet number I, I think 22 is kind of pushing it for a show like this yeah, um, I, I hope next season they don't go 22 and overextend themselves I, i'd like to see it stay small um I, I still think the first season should have only been 12 i think they could have told a complete story arc in 12 episodes but we'll, we'll give them. I, I don't want to jump the gun on that. I think 16 is actually a nice intermediate number, and we'll see how they work with that. But I think they're going to have to advance the timeline if they want. Like, let's say the show does go for 10 years. That's that's wishful thinking. show goes for 10 years, and they're ready to do the Batman, like like what they did with uh, Clark Kent at the end of Smallville, is they basically made it so he's now Superman, officially called Superman the... The world recognizes him. He's a villain, like, you know, or hero, rather. <laughs> uh, and you went off, you left that show thinking, okay, this is now where Superman begins from the movies and kind of stuff like that. That's that's how I came out of Smallville. So I, I have a feeling Gotham was going to want to end on that same note. And for them to do that, if this show does go on 10 years, that makes Bruce, what, 22? And that seems a little young for yeah. Batman to begin. I mean, not really. Doesn't yeah, he start in his twenties? Uh, they did mention that they wanted this to be a completely different entity, as far as the background and the universe and everything happens. So it could be a young Batman. And as far as you know, the story going, possibly you know, to second season to third season, it has to do with their views and how people are reacting to the show because you know if they don't get enough positive review from the first season second season isn't gonna happen it's true yeah. too yeah i honest i think honestly especially if we're starting with a clean slate batman can start as early as 18. it really can yeah. if bruce wants to pick up the, the cowl at 18. 
Yeah, I then, mean, then he would be Bat Teen and not Batman. Bat Teen. Well, I mean, legally, it's a man. 18's technically. <laughs> this is Teen know, Titans. That year. But listen. <laughs> is Batman <laughs> even in the Teen Titans? Titans? Join the army. I thought it was no. just Robin. Yeah, just Robin's in the Teen Titans. Robin. Teen Titans. You know, I, I think. No. It, it, it would be really. I, I'm thinking they're going to have to because, like, how much is going to. Like, if, if the season is just back to back stuff, I mean, I, the world's not going to change much in the course of however long this, you know, whatever time span the season covers. You know, and I, I think it would have to. Because if we're working towards Batman and we're just slogging through this kid's friggin' teenage years, it's going to take forever. And it's going to just drag. Yes. So, I mean... And they have to establish the penguin, not, only the, not only Bruce, but you have to think about Poison Ivy. Right? She's yes. so young in this. Like, she, like we got to give her time to grow. we got to mm-hmm. give Catwoman, you know, uh, Mr. Freeze, Riddler. Like, these, these are all characters that we do have to explore. Uh, in this origin story, and for that to really effectively work, the timeline has to advance. Penguin's not going to be able to come up with an army overnight. That no. like I could no. see him yeah. still building it up and having like this small thing, and then season two happens and they come back, and a year's time has passed, and he has a lot more than he had before. Like, right, right. I know. mean, if they, uh, I mean, they're going to do an, an origin thing on the penguin. I think it's actually, you know, enlisted in the episodes that they have released so far, like the names. There's going to be something that's Penguin specific. But I think after that point, he's going to come and poke the wasp's, wasp's nest a couple times through the rest of the season. And you might see him more prominently near the end of the season, but until then, you're going to see him here and there hey. in the background, building up his his uh, his power, I guess you could say. Yeah. I don't know about that because... At- I've only seen one physical billboard ad for Gotham, and it's it's Penguin. They 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 pushed him pretty hard with the with the campaign, with the advertising. Oh campaign. yeah. I thought well, that he... was a Harry Potter thing. Nope. <laughs> I really did. I was like, "Where's his scar?" And Mike's like, "Uh, that's for Gotham." And I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> oh, well, that makes sense now." <laughs> yeah. He. I mean, he's like kind of the. I mean, he's the big villain that they're pushing right now. But the thing is, like, are they going to keep? Because all these villains, if they're showing these their upbringing, they're still a very relatively strong presence when Batman becomes Batman. You know, like the Penguin's still a big threat. Like, mm-hmm. and the Riddler just comes out, and, the, and Ivy and Falcone's still in control of the city. So, like, I don't know how the show's going to do it because are they going to leave themselves enough wiggle room to like let actual story progress with these villains and somehow still have them in power when Bruce grows up. I mean, I don't know how they're going to do that. I mean, I'm sure they've thought of something, but like, it's not going to be the same as it can't be the same as what we're expecting. Cause it, like nothing's going to change then. I mean, the city's still going to be corrupt. Jim's would still be fighting a useless fight until Batman shows up. And like, are we just going to really have to wait for Batman to get these villains rolling for real? Well, if, if- if my knowledge is any good, uh, yes, the town is still shitty, but what Gordon managed to do is clean up the police department at least a little bit. Right. Yeah. Make them not as corrupt. So I feel like those are the steps that Gordon can achieve on his own. But as far as the villains go, that's something the police force can't deal with. Right. And another thing that was noteworthy is, is we had some background on uh, Arkham uh, Asylum. Mm-hmm. Right. So yes. we're... we're People, uh, especially that have been playing the the new launch of games recently, are very familiar with Arkham Asylum, and it was a very prominent part of the first uh, the Batman Begins, or was it the second one? No, it was the first one when Scarecrow escaped and let everybody yes. out. You know. Um, yes. So we kind of got an origin story on that. So now we have to mm. we 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 know that Arkham's got to be opening again. Like we know that. Yeah. Well, and that's, and that was part Wayne's, of the reason. The Wayne's plan was to open it again. Right. But now that they're dead, um, the Wayne Foundation is sort of like the Wayne Enterprises. Sorry, not Wayne Foundation. Wayne Enterprises is sort of like, I don't, we don't know. Right. So, I have no idea how to I, I think a lot of the, the 
the crime is going to be cleaned up, and we're going to start seeing things pick up. And it's as soon as Arkham opens, and they're going to start throwing people in there because the jails are full. We know that. They established that in the first episode. That, so they have to reopen a prison. Arkham Asylum is the perfect solution to this, and they're going to realize that pretty quickly. And you're probably going to see Bruce backing this, and this is going to be his doing. Um, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't doubt that. So I yeah. think I think a lot of these people will be cleaned up off the streets. Yeah. Maybe not um, Carmine Falcone, but um, you, you'll probably well, probably see... the smaller yeah. time people. But then the thing is, I see them all breaking out toward the end of oh, the season. Constantly. Yeah, I was <laughs> just going to say, that's a, that's a constant thing. Yeah, toward the end of the series, I'm gonna, I, I see them all break out. I could see the final episode have Arkham break open, everybody escape, and just Batman, like swooping down and like that's how they end the series have has any of you watched angel yes but okay do you remember the absolutely last episode of angel yes where all the things mean, are just running at them and it's the heartbreak apocalypse the episode oh mean do you mean heartbreak the episode is that was that what you called it Yes. I just called it a shitstorm of bad things because yeah. everything just came rushing at them. They're all ready, and then black screen. So if that's what you're, you know, you're, you're probably thinking around the same lines where somewhere all the there. bad guys are coming out, and they're like, oh, no, and then black screen. Yeah, somewhere around there because we have the movies. Even though it's not directly tied to them, we have the movies to answer what kind of happens next at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. You know, loosely because, like I said, they're, they're not ex exactly tied The the TV show here is not confining to the rules of the the movies, though. Like I said, they did throw some throwbacks, having the God, Batman Forever, Bruce Manor, Bruce, you know, the Wayne Manor or whatever, as, as the same manner, like helped tie that stuff to me, you know, a little bit more, even though it's not exactly there. I do, so. I do have a theory about this, because if in the overarching DC universe if they want to bring arrow and batman together then they might not cut it there mm. and they might mm. want to take it to a place where batman and Ar and green arrow can be working together and flash well they could just let Ooh. gotham end and then put batman as a cameo in those shows is Ooh. that true? No, that's true, but... Wendell just pointed out in chat, he goes, the guy who wrote Angel is a producer and writer on this show. So... <laughs> wow! <Ooh. laughs> I, I wasn't plotting that at, at all. I honestly did not know that. that... So, it, that's an amazing coincidence right. that I brought that up. It is an amazing coincidence, and it kind of further backs up my, my final <laughs> yeah. theory there. It so. does. I'm a little scared, because usually our, <laughs> our wild speculations... Uh, end up being spot on, yeah. so it's well, going to okay. be. Don't say usually. I think it's a hit or miss. It's fifty fifty. Thirty percent of no, the no, time. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't say. I did not say our normal speculations. I said our wild speculations. We're gonna need to start a wild speculation tally. We will. <laughs> we are. We will. We'll have to do one. So, yeah. But that just further goes, I, that might very well be how the, the series ends, and I see that being a very good ending. I would be happy with that ending, me personally. I don't know about you guys. The cliffhanger. Oh, my God. I would, Honestly, I, I would be. Love it. <sighs> Murdy have I, a heart attack. <laughs> I feel like the, the you know, they're going to want to copy Marvel. They're going to want to do a crossover -y thing. Mm. And I think, you know, having a cameo in someone else's show, yeah, but having your own show and then crossing over is a completely different thing. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, did they not just announce a Justice League movie? Oh, I don't know about that. I thought I saw something on that earlier today. I... Maybe they finally changed the name of Batman vs. Superman to Justice League oh, no. movie, which, let's face it, that's oh, what they were trying to do. That's, that's not... That's still Batman vs. Superman plus Aquaman, Wonder Woman. Oh no, this is Wonder this Wonder is animation Cyborg one. Plus, um, I just looked it up. It's it's Justice Everest. League Throne of Atlantis, but it's still it's still animated. Oh yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, and that's where DC really shines. They do. Yeah. They're animated shows. Oh yeah, definitely. It's one hundred percent their animated shows. So. At Wheelhouse. 
Yeah. So, I mean, of course, besides comic books, because clearly Marvel and DC both are major. Right. I think Marvel pretty much has the movies locked down. They're dabbling in the TV. They're doing well with it. They are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But DC, I think if they stay strong with the animation, and 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 they're fighting, they're fighting the same fight, but on a different plane and something that yeah. they can still compete and and be right up there with Marvel in without oh, stepping course. on each other's toes too much. But the thing with that is they're never going to reach the audience that they can with movies, with these cartoons. Yeah. Because you're not going to get an action movie fan to watch a, a, a cartoon. The thing is... Cer- know, certain certain ones. Right. Marvel, uh, Marvel slash Disney can really start stepping on the animation toes of DC because of, you know, the backing of Disney and all their artists because we all know Disney is amazing at animation. Well... Yes. Well, I don't know seen... if I want to get into this debate with you because this is a horse of a different color, but <laughs> when was the last time Disney actually animated anything that had nothing to do with Pixar? What do you mean? Pixar is a separate company. They bought yeah, Pixar. Yeah, no, I know. When was the last time Disney came out with their own animated movie? It was like The Frog Princess. And Bro- before that was, are you, wait, no, was what? No, what are you talking about? Are you talking about hand-drawn or are you talking about just animated? Because Disney Frozen. Animated. Frozen... I thought Frozen Disney. was Pixar. Disney. No. No. Frozen is, is Disney. Yep. Okay. So anyway, Pixar how about that Pixar is cat Toy woman? Story, <laughs> um, um, Monsters, Inc., Brave. Okay, so they um, had two movies in the Wally. last, like, ten years. What? They had, like, two movies in the last ten years. Who? Disney. No. no. They've had so many. We're, we'll, we, will, we will talk about this later. I will get so, into anyway, this. Listen. You're not right. Listen. We got we got we got to get to the friggin' namesake of the episode. Move on. We gotta do it. The Kill lady. Me inside. The lady with the cat and the scratches and well, the muse. Seriously, Selena Kyle. Who's who's that? Oh God. Um, that's my friend. I I can't call her that. I can't no. because I'm gonna lose my eyes. <laughs> it's. <laughs> her name is Cat. It's Cat. You're gonna lose it's your cat. eyes? Oh yeah, yeah you are. She did that. That fucking happened, okay? <laughs> yeah, it did. You can't take that, that the back. No. Fucking thing I've ever seen. A Fish small was like, child you do. know what? You're gonna be fine. We'll get you to the hospital. And then she pulls yeah. the gun out <laughs> and had no clip in it. The thing is, the scene after that happened. Did you notice there was no blood on her hands? Well, no. She's a clean kid. I mean, she's a cat. She cleaned herself. <laughs> She's, you know, oh, I got blood. Uh, uh. Look, what eh, eh, eh. <laughs> Hepatitis everywhere. <laughs> Great. Uh. No, but seriously, that was freaking awesome. It was. It, was. it showed I, I love you her, her so much. It showed you. It showed you her crazy side and that she's confident in her abilities. I mean, she really stepped up this this episode mm-hmm. and um yeah. I said it the I said it on our first podcast and I'll say it again. The first episode, she did not say a single word and she was still a better catwoman than Holly Berry. <laughs> Dom, you can't be Stop. different catwoman. No. Stop, Stop comparing apples to oranges. I'm just saying. Just saying. No, but now now that we've heard her Twilight. speak, now that we've heard her speak, I think she's still like up there with one of the best Catwomans of all time. I thought yeah. her voice is so adorable. I just cheeks, and then she would have scratched me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I was afraid. I was honestly afraid that she would start talking and I would start hating her. Yeah. But I was really not just. Dis- I was really happy. She was really perfect. She was great. She was. They so, did a great job I'm, casting. And I. I'm excited. And even the the backdrops of uh, this episode were not as over exaggerated as they were in the f- the pilot, and I enjoyed it a little bit more. It helped me feel yeah. a little more grounded to the the city than the over stylized comic book. Uh, mm-hmm. There's still a few scenes here and there where I could tell that you know there's they're using green screens and mm-hmm. um, they're they are live on location, but they're just areas that are green screened. Like for example the I, I know it was in the pilot, but in the pilot there was like um, a street that they were on, and they were really walking on the sidewalk. But it was half of it was green screened, and they added in like the railroad track above you to to like 
seemed like it was something else, but you could tell it was like it was green screen, so it was different. Um, mm-hmm. And I felt less of that in this episode, so I actually I found myself more immersed into it than I don't know than. Yeah, I, no, I, it, I don't even it, know what I it, felt it, in the the first episode. I didn't feel immersed <laughs> in the pilot. Right. I mean, it it was filmed better. I I mean, honestly, I think it was just just better just better done. I mean, the only semi weird looking thing was when they hurled that kid through the window. That looked a little thin, eh, but yeah. I mean, whatever. It's 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 just it's a TV show. I don't expect movie quality. Right, right. Was so. the editing? Yeah, yeah, that could have been it. Part. Yeah, could be. I mean, for the only other comic book show we really have the base off of right now is uh, Agents of Shield, and Agents of Shield is kind of running on a movie budget almost, like. Some of their special effects are really good. They're up there, but not every show has that budget, and especially a we newer type show, Arrow. you know? What was that, Clay? We can compare it to Arrow. Yeah. I mean, but Arrow feels a little more grounded in the world that they're in. It doesn't seem like they're green screening everything. I don't know. So no, you're it's, right. It's I hard. mean, the, I'm sure the only things in that show that are green screened are the wide shots of the city yeah uh wendell also says the cat looks a, uh like a young michelle pfeiffer uh, that's what i, I noticed that yeah. like, she was my first yeah. cat woman and i love michelle pfeiffer mm-hmm. i pretty much love her in everything she's been in and so yeah she was my first cat woman and i completely agree she does look like a young I mean, it helps and you, she's got that cute adorable side to her and mm-hmm. she's got that you know i life on the streets kind of thing to her she's got the cat movements down perfectly oh yeah. it's beautiful and she's <sighs> got that attitude mm-hmm. and dogs hate her and the dogs <laughs> hate her yeah, yeah dogs dogs hate her. Hate her. but like we said earlier what what she what she said to the cop like uh how she got gordon's attention to to talk to him and you know and then <laughs> It's just like that was classic Catwoman. It made me uncomfortable. It did yep. its job. It was perfect there. <laughs> but then the way it ended is she goes, I saw the whole thing. I know who killed, or I, I saw who killed the Waynes. Mm-hmm. So what do you think that actually means? Because we know she was there. She was present in the alleyway. We know that she she saw that. But did she follow him? Oh. Yeah. That's a good question. I don't know. Yeah. We didn't really see, because she just kind of leapt away, I think, in that shot. Yeah, and she's so. also fast, so she can leave and come back. Yeah. And we went out of yeah. I mean, if anywhere. she saw what we saw, which is just, you know, eyebrows and a, a sock or something. I don't some know about of... you guys, but if I ever see those eyes again, I'm going to be able to recognize them instantly. Oh, yeah, of course. I, to be honest, I think the mayor has something to do with everything. But what that's is the just... mayor? The mayor? You know... The guy who wanted to round up all the kids and throw them in jail? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Throw okay. them all to juvie? The mayor. The mayor. I gotta watch that scene again because the man who shot the Waynes was chubby. Oh, face. no, I didn't say that the mayor actually did it. I'm just saying he's behind some of the happenings that's been going on. I'm saying he could have done it. Maybe. <laughs> I don't recognize those eyes, so no. no. It's not no. somebody we've seen thus far. <laughs> oh, Dom's <laughs> photographic memory here. Okay, Ichabod Crane. <laughs> I mean, on the bright side, I I think that well, not on the bright side. Well, I guess the bright side for Nikki. I think she's probably right. I think the mayor probably had something to do with the Wayne's being taken down. The mayor, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, in the first movie and in the comics, especially, has always kind of been corrupt. Oh God, yeah. So he's That's no better party. than than the police right now. Well, at this for point. someone who's being introduced into the well, DC universe, this is a good prediction for me. So shh. Yeah, no, that's true. Yeah, no, so I'm giving look, it back. Just look at the way he interacts with the police chief. Yeah. Yeah. Just kicks up his legs. He and the was desk. like ready to kiss his feet. It's true. Oh yeah. It's true. No, I mean the mob owns him. Yeah. I mean that's that's when like Harvey Dent shows up and swoops into Gotham and you know blah blah blah, but. You know, I, I, I don't know if I like Harvey Dent. He's a little two faced to me. <gasps> oh. I know that much about DC that that was just the hor- most horrible Fun. thing ever. You know what? Seriously. I'm gonna. All right. Anyway. I'm gonna make <laughs> a sheet of paper. I don't know what it's gonna say.
say, but it is just going to say puns. And I'm going to hold <laughs> it up every time you make a pun that makes me want to bomb. <laughs> That'd be perfect. Yeah. All right, so you guys have... Uh... <laughs> no, not that one. <laughs> not not that scary. one. <laughs> you guys have anything else uh, to touch on this episode before we get into next week? One little thing. Well, two little things about Bruce. Um, didn't get to mention them, but one, I think you might be listening to death metal, and that's yes. A-OK. <laughs> that's fine. I, I was, completely fine. Hold on. No, I was no, no, super no, confused no. by like, that. You want to know what I thought as soon as I heard him listening to that heavy metal? Oh. The Lego movie. Darkness. Oh. No parents. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Listen. <man. laughs> First off, it's fucking... It's fucking cool. Whatever it is, it's really cool. I'm I'm down with that. I second, need to edit actually it with that me- with that song. Over. You should. But second thing, I, I like that he's sneaking up on people already. Yes. <laughs> that was, that was no, that was cool. perfect. I totally that forgot about really that. Cool. I had this nice little laughing moment when when he does it. He's like, "Don't sneak yep. up like that or whatever." <laughs> like, ah, you. I was like, "Oh my god, it's so good." So, yeah. Those are my. Those are my. Those are just two things. I was like, I, I, I gotta. I gotta talk about this. But that anyway. That that's about all I have to say about that. Nice, nice. Uh, anybody else have any final thoughts? I want my prediction about the doll maker to be true, and Gordon. <laughs> yes. Because that'd be dope. That would be very interesting. Mm. I want my prediction about the end of the series to be true. Yeah. Just, just so Nikki cries. We're going to wait a lot longer to figure that one out, I think. Just so Nikki cries at the end when it ends on this big cliffhanger. <laughs> but we know what happens. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, just go watch all the movies Nothing after that and you'll be fine. Out. Well, you know what? You watch Homeward Bound a million times. You still know the cat goes over the water roller. You still fucking cry. <laughs> She's not wrong. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> Uh, and girling at its finest. Uh, I. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, what are your final thoughts? <laughs> my final thoughts are: I prefer Milo and Otis. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so next week, the episode is called Balloon Man. Right. In it, Detective uh, detectives Gordon and Bullock track down a vigilante who is killing corrupt Gotham citizens by attaching them to weather balloons. Interesting. Meanwhile, Oswald Cobblepot returns to Gotham and gets a new job close to an influential figure in the underworld. What? Who do you think that? Who do you think that could be? Influential figure in the underworld. I don't know. See, I have no idea. So who's I'm, the balloon I'm... man? I think that's the more important question. Because I don't. That doesn't sound familiar to me. I think it's just a new villain. I think it's I think kind of like Don Patty. I don't know that yeah. name. They just thought him up and decided to throw him in there. Yeah, that's totally Bane. It's like Doug <laughs> and Patty Mayonnaise. But I'm curious. Do you think this this balloon man has has like at least like a hundred of these balloons. Uh, I think it's more like ninety nine. Are they red? They're yeah, red. they'd have to be. The left balloons. Ninety nine says left so balloons. Left balloons. So, yeah, I don't know. A close member to an influential figure in the underworld. I, Carmine Falcone is the one that stands out the most to me right now. Yeah. But that seems a little obvious. Yeah, and I mean... So, I mean, it's probably whoever the balloon man is. So the other option is Dollmaker. Do you, do you think it's possible? I don't think they'd bring the Dollmaker in so fast like that. No, especially if he's... Overseas. Could be talking to the Dollmaker's henchmen, though, that are speaking on his behalf. But would that henchman be influential? If he's speaking for the balloon, balloon man? Yeah. It could be. Speak on his behalf. It could... It could be, the the deal with the Dollmaker well, could even be like a, a, a raw ghoul uh, situation where in Batman books. Begins he he pretended not to be raw the ghoul and then we find out that he was. Oh, we thought yeah, he was just, speaking on his say, behalf. Does yeah. say close to. So it does say yes. close. It doesn't mean he's working for the right. whatever. Right. Okay. So I don't know. Any other 
speculation on that. We'll see. We'll take a tally and see who's right. I I got nothing. I don't know. Is it possible he could go back and work for Fish Money? He's working for oh. the zombie of Mr. Wayne. No, I don't think he's going back to Miss Fish. I think she'll if, have yeah, his head on the ladder. Exactly. <laughs> she did say, I wish Oswald was still alive. So she I paid so she could torture him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she calls him a punk. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. She didn't make him suffer nearly enough. Oh, that was an amazing scene. It just, like, zoomed in, and she's all like... It was. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think that about wraps things up. Um, Play us off, Tom. Yeah. Uh, Nikki, where can the people find you? They can find me on Twitter, at LadyVenom24. L-A-D-Y-V-E-N-O-M-24. Excellent. Cleo, where can the people find you? They can find me all over the internet, at Cleomoto. Everywhere. 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 John, where can the people find your beautiful face? They can find my beautiful face right here in this camera. Hey, Bailey. And you can follow me on Twitter at no more, no more. If you would be so inclined. <laughs> That's creepy. That is not a beautiful face. Get, get that. That's, I like it. I'm going to have nightmares now. <laughs> And scary, horror like stories it. coming up, and that is going to be enough to give me nightmares. I don't even. The, we got one clown to deal with. I don't I'm need two. Glad I don't watch that show. Don't need two. You can find me down below at phenomenon. P H E N O M E D O M. You can also find the four of us and more on Twitter, Facebook, Gmail, G Plus, and right here on YouTube slash ASO TV podcast for some more podcasts for some of your favorite TV shows. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment down below. Stop by for our live shows. We'll give you shout-outs during the show. And uh, if you have any questions or follow-ups, leave your comment down below, and we will do our best to answer them. Uh, Till next week. I'm telling you to blow him. I will. Can you blow Uh, my whistle, baby? Whistle, baby, let me know. (laughs) Till next week. (laughs) See you guys later. Bye. Latest.